Exactly the same, but similar to the one, I, uh, the technology I talk about in my book. Okay. All right, so we've mentioned a lot about global warming, and as you said, there are some people that just don't buy it, but we have proof. Ladies and gentlemen, we have definitive proof of global warming, and that's on our next slide, so let's bring that one up. We can dispel this, uh, any sort of doubts and worries about this forever. <laughs> All right, <clears throat> now we've got that. So, I've read your book, of course, and I'm fast-forwarding here to, to what you're talking about. It seems to me, if I've understood it right, that there was a U.S. government program at the Argonne National Laboratory in Idaho and Illinois over the period of about 1964 to 1994. 1984 to 94. 1984 to 1994. And the purpose of this program was to find a way to produce electricity from nuclear power without the risks. Or right. with minimizing the risks. Right. Well, the, the physicists at Argonne um, started up a fast breeder reactor back in uh, 1964 mm -hmm. called uh, the EBR2, the Experimental Breeder Reactor. And uh, by 1984, they realized that unless they could figure out a way to solve all the problems associated with nuclear power, that it was simply going to be politically untenable to use it. Mm -hmm. And they were convinced that nuclear power was the fuel of the future. So they set out on a project called the Integral Fast Reactor Project back in 1984 to figure out a way to solve all the problems associated with nuclear power. They got an army of physicists up there. They carried out what was probably the biggest energy research project in history. And by 1994, they had succeeded in their goals beyond their wildest imaginations. They were right at the very end of the project when Congress inexplicably pulled their funding, shut down the project, ordered them to dismantle the facility, even though it was the world's foremost nuclear research facility, because it was, quote, a symbol. And mm -hmm. that was from the, the Clinton White House. And then uh, the Department of Energy ordered the, the uh, physicists and engineers who worked on the project to not publicize it. So this technology and the design for this revolutionary reactor that could provide all the energy that we need for the whole planet for almost a thousand years without mining a single speck of uranium has just been sitting on the shelf unknown to the public uh, for the last 15 years. That is just unbelievable, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, I'm, I still find it unbelievable, and I've been researching this for a decade. For a decade. So, so just to recap this, the government did all this research, hundreds of scientists or thousands of scientists? Uh, about almost 500 PhDs. 500 um, PhDs working on this program up in Idaho um, on integral like a term. fast reactors. They succeeded in, in developing another another technology for creating electricity from nuclear power, and then the government said, no, this is done, we're not going to continue the program, we're going to dismantle the reactor, we're taking it apart so it cannot be used for any more research, and... Pretend it never happened. And pretend it never happened. Unbelievable. Yeah, and, okay. and, and very costly to the planet, because had they continued the research, uh, they would have finished up the project in short order. They were basically... Mm -hmm taking a process that they had already used to formulate, to fabricate uh, tens of thousands of fuel pins, and they were going to make a commercial-sized uh, version of it. Mm -hmm. uh, that was the only thing that was left to do. Huh. And uh, had they continued the project, we would now be building these reactors, right. and we would have a lot less uh, pollution, and we would have a key, essentially, to eliminating coal, and ultimately to eliminating all fossil fuels, which is possibly one of the reasons why this was covered up. But, <laughs> but you know, I can't say uh, that there was any kind of conspiracy. There was obviously a lot of ignorance involved, mm -hmm. uh, a lot of political pandering, um, and possibly pressure from the fossil fuel industries, which are, of course, the most powerful industries on the planet. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, I, can't, I, I can't say their, their fingerprints aren't on it. But right. uh, they're good at wiping off their fingerprints. Wow. Um, so, uh, a safer way to create electricity from nuclear power. Okay, so one of the things when people think about nuclear power, I think it scares a lot of people, and I agree with you, it's ignorance. I assume we agree on that. Um, but one of the things that people think about is nuclear weapons, and they equate nuclear power with nuclear weapons, but there's, which is pretty far-fetched. But then there are the more real things like nuclear waste, 
which actually is something that we have from the current type of nuclear power. Um, the next slide shows us some fuel casks that nuclear waste is stored in. Um, I've heard that they were, I mean, for a while the government wanted to build a, a deep underground place in Yucca Mountain, Nevada to store just thousands of tons of, of high level, highly radioactive nuclear waste. I don't know where that thing is now. Um, another thing it's in trouble. It's in trouble. Good. As it should be, <coughs> in my opinion. Another thing, the Goshute Indian tribe in uh, Utah, just uh, outside of Salt Lake City, negotiated their own deal with the federal government. Well, it was with a uh, consortium of power companies to temp quote unquote temporarily store some high level nuclear waste on their land. And I don't know where that one went, but a lot of the members of that Indian tribe said the elders who signed the deal on their behalf sold them out. Um, but we have real problems of nuclear waste all around the country. So does this integral fast reactor eliminate that problem of creating lots and lots of highly radioactive uh, nuclear waste with a long half-life? And, and tell us about that. Well, it does create nuclear waste, um, as any nuclear plant would, but the type of spent fuel we have now is going to be radioactive for hundreds of thousands of years. Mm -hmm. And thus, they're trying to create a, a situation in Yucca Mountain where they can put this stuff and then essentially watch over it for vitae maternum. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the, fast react, at, the fast reactor that I write about in Prescription for the Planet actually burns that s nuclear waste as fuel. Mm -hmm. And it, it utilizes about 100% of the energy that's available in mined uranium instead of the less than 1% that our reactors do today. So because <clears throat> of that, it, it's so much more efficient and we have so much spent fuel and so much depleted uranium from creating fuel for the current type of reactors that we have that we would never have to mine any uranium and we would just use it all up. Now, you will get nuclear waste out of it, but it won't be anything that can be used for weapons. Mm -hmm. uh, all the uranium and plutonium that's in spent fuel today will be completely consumed and you'll get highly radioactive fission products that have to be disposed of when a plant shuts down after about 50 or 60 years. Um, it will be in a form uh, that's embedded in glass and nothing can leach out of this glass for thousands of years. Well, that sounds pretty good uh, and it sounds even better when you realize that the, the radioactive materials that are in that glass will only be radioactive for a few hundred years. So long before any of it could leach into the environment, it won't be radioactive anymore because they have much shorter half-lives. So mm -hmm. essentially you would be able to dispose of this safely in any number of places, even Yucca Mountain if you wanted to. <laughs> and, uh, and the problem would essentially be solved. By the way, it can also burn all the material from decommissioned nuclear weapons. Hmm. So essentially we're taking a, 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 a something that we really want to get rid of, that we're desperate to get rid of, and we're making it uh, making our energy out of it and completely solving the problem. So it's like taking waste and making electricity out of it. Exactly. Um, so the, the nuclear, the type of tech, nuclear power technology that we have right now uses about 1% of the energy that's in there. A little less. Okay. And the integral fast reactor would use about 100%. We would use all <clears> of it. We <throat> would use all of it. All right. Um, I want to ask you, <coughs> excuse me. So um, we would not have to mine for uranium. Wouldn't have to mine uranium, we wouldn't have to enrich uranium either. Uh -huh. and, and one of the arguments that uh, a lot of anti-nuclear people have against using nuclear power is the carbon footprint and, and the pollution involved with mining and enriching uranium. Mm -hmm. Problem solved, we aren't gonna have to do that anymore. I wanted to mention that Tom's book is available from amazon.com and also available on the, the, avid, the reader. avid reader here in Davis. So come on by and pick one yeah. up. Also, also um, the first part of the book, uh, you can read it online at my website, prescriptionfortheplanet.com. Prescriptionfortheplanet.com. So since the book was published in the fall, a lot of people around the world, well, you talked to lots of scientists, nuclear physicists, and so on, including the men that, that ran this program up there from 1984 until 1994, 
and they proofread your book, right? Well, I worked published. very closely with them. I still do, actually. Okay. 